Tmilang, in the name of Christ, how you doing? Uh, get garabo. It's your girl, Kren K. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're Stella, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. It's Christmas, hello. Okay, so what's up? Let me just put some caveats on there. I may or may not be wearing app makeup, but if I am, y'all gonna know because it's bouncing all over the show off my face. Um, second one that I shall put out there is the fact that my white cast sunscreen is still greeting you. It's like, hello, what's up? So now look at my eye uh, brows, they're kind of white. It's like, whoa, what's up with that? Anyway, whatever. Mm. Thirdly, uh, what shall I say? my captions they're not always accurate so look out for that i'm not editing them i don't have time if i had an editor that would be a thing but it's not we keep them however because we think they're cute okay cool now that we've put all that out there let's just get straight into it it is the 25th of december 2023 just what people call christmas i'm not really sure um about what's going on over there but i've become increasingly convicted that Jesus was definitely not born today some years ago, but you know, it is what it is. I do not, however, condemn the body of Christ for continuing to celebrate this day as Christ's birthday. There's just too many of them for us to like write them off. However, uh, what I do sort of kind of like not understand is why everybody else is out here hanging out on our holiday, swinging on it like a hammock, like chill. It's not yours. Moving on right ahead. <clears throat> Majaka Tata. Majagatata. Oh, I'm all by myself, by the way, on the yard. They all went to wherever to celebrate this day with other people. And that's just the sad thing. They celebrate the day of the Lord. Um, oh, my hair's doing that stuff again, you guys. They celebrate Christ's day, but they're not Christian. <laughs> anyway, let them do whatever. I feel content because of the fact that I like it. When I'm all by myself on this yard. Yo, this thing, total scratcher, been putting it out there. Anywho, anyhow, my hair is all messy and untidy and I don't care, but like, guess what? I've got an Alice band. Oh, and the Alice band helps make things a little bit better. Listen, um, like, no, we're not doing this. Majaka Tata, yes. Majaka Tata, that's what's going on. Those of you who don't understand what that is, I shall explain. It means eat with difficulty yeah there is this like um mm, you know what we need water 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 everywhere not a drop to drink that's about to be you <laughs> mm. all there will be is ocean water is that technology yet? invented to convert ocean water into regular water like take out all that salt Come on, you can't have so many scientists on the earth and that not be a thing. I bet there is. It is. But you see, the world are all about, like the global elites, they're all about that Hegelian dialectic where it is that they're like, never days over my dead body before I will allow the planet to have enough water to feed everybody with Kwashi or core. To help everybody that is out here parched get quenched because then we're going to fix the world and when we fix the world, who, 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 who here is going to need us? Who? Who? Who's gonna need us? Okay, we need to be able to give little squeezy bottles full of water to some impoverished children in the Horn of Africa. So we cannot allow our technology where it is that we are converting seawater into regular water. We can't convert that. Cause then who's gonna need us? Yeah, that's actually a thing. I believe in. Mm. Just like I believe the chill rain out of future. Anyway, whatever. Another story for another day that, if anything, it's another story that I already spoke about the other day, so it's not really coming soon. To a theater near you. What's up? Mmm. Majaka Tata. Yes, we're going right back to that. Majaka Tata. Uh, please say it with me now. Those of you who don't speak English, just learn it, okay? Because that's exactly how life is going to be for you in the tribulation. It's coming. Lojagatata, majagatata. So majagatata means eat with difficulty, but it's not what you think. So when I was growing up in the hood, like once I'm, um, uh, back when South Africa was still South Africa and not whatever random thing it's doing today, I get it. South Africa's like Freddy Krueger. It's a nightmare on Allen Street. I literally can't wake up fast enough. Oh, I want to get out of a dream. Oh, 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 oh. And Kruger's still like Archer pursuing me and I'm about to die, except um, booyah, rapture. Uh, 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 uh. 
that's a thing. Okay, cool bees and bananas, right? So like when I was growing up in the Gassi there in the Soweto. Good lad, you Soweto. Um, yeah, we used to like eat my, my like my keep keep. Alrighty, there's this like total snack. It's an African thing. I just like yeah. I have no idea why under heaven it's just for us. Uh. Oh, that was nice. I'm sorry, like I just drank water. Y'all gonna wanna burp one day when when you burp all that's coming out. Guess who Because like uh, there's nothing to burp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm only laughing at you because you were totally laughing at me and the Bible made it clear that when the disciples mourn, all of y'all will be rejoicing. So I'm rejoicing. Okay, listen, you guys, my jakatata. Get my kip kipi. My kip kipi is this like black snack. Like, yo, I never seen nobody else eat that. Like, even after cultural appropriation happened, like where it is that like white chicks out here wearing braids. They still did not eat my, my kip kip. I don't know what that was. And mind you, I don't care about cultural appropriation. I really don't care. I don't mind. It's like it's your hair braided if you want. If anything, that braid, Morobots, oh, what dang, it's called a French braid for a reason because it's come, it comes from like, I don't know, France. Yeah. The inverse one is called a German braid. Why? Because it comes from German. Yeah. Europe. Germany. So, black people, why are you claiming it as your own exactly? Anyway, moving on right ahead. Hari dwelling, bilu dwelling, mahwara ati robots, ene? Mm. But like anyway, when people started embracing other people's cultures, that's what I'm getting at. My keep keep it just never did that transfer. They never moved over to the other side. It's like, you know, a poor, a failed case of osmosis. Except it's like reverse osmosis. Did not quite move over to the white community. You know, maybe India's. Have you ever seen an Indian person eating a keep keep? I don't know, you tell me. I don't I never seen one. All I see are black folk. And when they get gentrified? Hmm, because my Swatokli morale from where they come from is 2012. No, not the year. <laughs> That's always a joke. Yeah, it's 2012, and my mom is back from wherever she was celebrating Christmas. Mm. Moving on right ahead. Uh, yeah, the Majaka Tata is just a black snack. Like, is it made in a black factory? I need to understand what that's about. Somebody please tell me why my Kipkipi Alimoruna Fela. Lima Zimba. Are we being poisoned? What's going on? I don't think so. Look at me. I'm so healthy. I ate a lot of my keep keep when I was growing up. Hey, Latin guys, have you ever seen my keep keep anywhere else in your lives other than Kuri Kasing? Kupari Boeng. If at all you've ever seen them in like the Kasis, only ever seen them in the Kasis, it must mean that they're manufactured just for black people. In which case, are they manufactured in black factories? Is there such a thing as that? Is it the same factory where they make Willard's cheesecake? Willard's um, crisps, sorry. Simba. Mobile Zang ma 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 Zimba. And then there's like a section that's like blacks only. <laughs> Is this like apartheid South Africa all over again where we've got like a section of snack that's just for blacks only? I don't know. I've I just I've never seen a single non-black eating my kip kipi and when black folk get gentrified, they also stop. <laughs> I haven't had my kip kip in a minute because I got gentrified. I got moved to the burbs and stuff. Yeah, if I had a comment section, I'd say please comment down below and let me know if at all upon living in the burbs, you know, you still eat my kip kipi but I have closed my comments for the very purpose of literally not wanting to hear from anybody. Get all of these apostate randos all over the show that are trying to get over the fact that they're going to hell by acting as if though I'm not going to heaven. Like, yo, it is what it is. So we close the comment section uh, by like, you know, at the top of your mind with like a bit of a light bulb. Let me know, uh, I guess, deep down inside somewhere. If at all you're still at your chowing, I'm a keep keepy hanging out in Santon. I don't know. Like, I guess I'll my keep keepy in a minute. Have not seen keep keepies in a minute. Only those blacks that still live in the car see, are they eating my keep keepy all the way to like granny ears? But everybody else is out here, like, you know, snacking on. I wanna be a Simba Chippy. I wanna be a Simba Chippy. I wanna be a Simba Chippy. So please uh, just come at me. Simba Chippy, uh, not my keep keepy. Anyway, there is this like black snack. I, I kid you not, I am not trying to be divisive. It is a black snack. I've never seen anyone other than black people eat it. You like a papa. It's like an obsession in the black community. There is this like black snack called my keep keep. Okay. And it's made from corn, like pretty much the same stuff that popcorn is made out of. Yeah, that's what my keep keepy are made from. Alrighty, um, just like next part. I always feel so distracted every time there's like activity on the outside. I sometimes wish it was like raining cats and dogs so that I wouldn't be disturbed. But when it rains cats and dogs, so too does it disturb the peace on the roof. So I take it back.
Another vehicle has commenced again. It has started again. Where is it going? Go then! Fly like a bird. Fly like a butterfly. Fly like what evil flies until you're in the sky. But please don't disturb my peace because I really need it. Make like a flower and blow. Just fly, just fly, like a bird in the sky, in the sky, like a bird. I hate activity all day, periphery. Because it disturbs my train of thought And because of eaves are dropping a Like a little bird fly But you're not flying are you? Cause I can hear you call Just idling And now I'm a bluesy jail For fun, for fun Jaka, Cocolo Fico Kinyonyana Yamu la la Omulele Hamahua Mobona Bamu Bita Snana Popo One Snana Popo Two Snana Popo Three Snonny, snonny. I'm still distracted. Like, I need people to go in the house so I can carry on with my train of thought. How oh, yeah, I am feeling like I'm cocoa fico, king, yon, 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 lala, omulele, ma, hua, ha, mona, ba, meets us, nana, popo, one. Snana popo to cookie, snana popo tre ah, snana popo for bina. Ayo yo, ah, cocolo fi cookie, no nya na ya mulala, o mulele ma hoa ha mona ba meets as nana popo one ah, popi two ah, snana popo tre ah. Again, again. Cocolo fi cookie, no nya na ya mulala, o mulele ma hoa ha mona ba meets as nana popo. I am still so distracted. There's so much activity outside. I can't deal. Kokolo figo, king yung yana, yamulala, omulele, mahua, hamona, bamubita, snani. Oh, those of you who are wondering what that means, it means a cocolo fico is a bird with a very long neck. When white people see her, they then call her Snanapopo 1, Snanapopo 2, Snanapopo 3, Snanapopo 4. It means nothing at all, that song. It's a kitty's like playful song. Cocolo fico is a bird with a very, very long neck. When uh, people see her, they call her Snana Popo. Uh, is Cocolo Fico like a flamingo? I mean, it rhymes. Cocolo Fico que flamingo, ya mulala, o mulele, ma hua ha mona, ba mitas, Nana Popo. Is that what it is? 
If so, while I'm learning today for the first time that Cocolofico is a flamingo, could be an ostrich, but I seriously think that it's a flamingo rather. <sighs> All of y'all be like Cocolofico. The way you're so proud, oh. Proud, anyway, whatever. Look, we're gonna get back into the point. My keep keepy, none of you my keep keepy, my jagatata. I just felt very distracted, so I couldn't carry on. But now I'm talking. Not that the noise on the outside is gone, it hasn't been eradicated, it has not been aided, but I'm still carrying on anyway. Why? Because Coco Lofico ain't got no time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mmm. My keep keep, you guys. Majakatata, they are made of um, corn. It's like popcorn. Mm, now that I think about it, because nobody really knows what they come from until like you find out. Okay, it's like a black snack, and the only reason it's a black snack is because I've only ever seen black people eat it. It's literally a black snack for that reason and that reason only. Yes, 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 yes. And it's like made up of all different kinds of colors. It's like colored popcorn, but like the dry version. Have you guys ever bought colored popcorn at the store? It's not my keep keep, it's not the real deal. There is something, there is a process that is involved in making my keep keepy. Do you understand what I'm saying? That make it near and impossible to eat. Just like, uh, pretty much, like, corn pop, like, popcorn that is not popped, it's kind of impossible to eat. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you want to chew that, goodbye tooth. Like, it's gonna leave with your teeth. Mm. There is something about my keep keepy. You guys, I, I'm promising you right now, you just, you gotta run with my story. I'm, I'm sticking to it. Mm. That makes it impossible to eat. First of all, they pop the makip gibi, right? Just like you would pop corn. Of course, it has to pop. It has to pop. The white portion has to come out, you know, like version like a flower. Yeah. But like, I don't know what is the industrial process that is involved in sucking all the air out of it. You know how popcorn is so puffy and airy? It's just like so and crunchy too. It's crunchy, it's puffy, it's airy. It's 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 a delight. Mm. It's it's very light. I bet if you were to like put popcorn on in some water, it'll stay on the surface and float. But my keep keep I feel like it might go all the way to the bottom and go cow in it land. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, no, I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> but it's heavier than popcorn. I don't know what you can use to measure the weight of it. Keep, keep. Even colored popcorn has some air to it, some fluff, some bounce, but my keep keepy. <laughs> it's getting a league on its own, on its own. So I think they take out the air, and I don't even know what process is involved industrially to take all that air out of that stuff. Like I really don't know. I cannot tell you what in the world is that stuff made of. Like, please somebody tell me. I'm thinking actually. <laughs> I'm actually thinking. You know how sometimes when you eat my keep keep eat this, there's like little quar, little quar, <laughs> What's that stuff made of, guys? Hey, my girl, about the poison as black people. What is that stuff made of? I need to know. Is it really corn? Because sometimes when you eat my keep keep, if you just go and grab like a big bunch <laughs> and you put all of it in your mouth, and sometimes you're like, hmm? <laughs> and out comes what looks like little guane, <laughs> la liviello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's in there. <laughs> like, where do they make them? <laughs> We've been getting fed some stuff as people. Hey, but look at us. We're so healthy. Look at how I'm glowing on the face. Give my me. Y'all know how it's true. Don't lie. Please don't lie. Y'all know the experience you're going to keep keeping, guys. Sometimes you're like, Ooh, I don't <laughs> Sometimes you're like, what is that? <laughs> and it's like this big. <laughs> and it's brown. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
anything like that in a packet daddy popcorn that I industrially made. You just know it. So please, I need to know. Oh my god, keep it back when it's okay. Why is that why I keep keeping gang? Please guys, go back to the time of building you keep we need to stop feeding them kids and stuff. <laughs> Something's wrong. Something is very terribly wrong. Okay, uh, those of you who uh, are lost a little, uh, let's just go back to baby. Let's let's re let's relax. Yeah. So there, I think that it's made of corn. Now I'm getting confused because I'm not sure. Only reason I'm saying I think it's made of corn is because it's white in the center, just like popcorn. But there is some process involved industrially that sucks out all the air and making it super dry. Like almost stale, like they've got to be stale. <laughs> I don't know, right? And then once they're nice and stale with no air in them, they then put all different kinds of food coloring on them. Sweet food coloring. Do you understand? Yeah, to make them sweet, essentially. And it's like a black people snack. So it looks like Smarties, like what a lot, what a lot, what a lot. It looks like colored popcorn. It looks like rainbow popcorn, but like it's like super dry and it's sold in the in the hood. Yeah, as a snack, I'm like keep keepy and they're delicious. Yeah, but every so often you encounter like what looks like a whole stick of like a bark of a tree, like at the end there, and you just like you take it out or something, you just throw it away thinking it's nothing much, but why is it in there? Why is it in there? What is this stuff made of? It's gotta be corn. Oh the kota elegant you guys <laughs> that you happen upon inside I'm gonna keep keep anyway whatever every so often you encounter a gota it's corn all right and these keep keepies because of the manufacturing process they called my keep keep all right uh because of the manufacturing process of it of them they don't chew easily like popcorn do you understand what i'm saying they're harder to chew like yeah it takes a lot more out of you to finish chewing and my keep keepy they're hard and some of them are so hard that they will give you like a toothache and they don't fully chew they just flatten and become like a, a, a flat bread that you just gotta swallow whole you gotta swallow it whole or get rid of it or whatever but they don't whatever it is that is the mechanical process of chewing it does not sometimes work well <laughs> with my keep keep all right so as a result of uh my keep 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 being so kind of rough to consume uh, black folk done given Magikipi ma another name, all right? Yeah, and it's Majakatata. Majakatata. In Mamilodi or Soto places, petty places, they call it, they call them Majakata, Majakata, Majakatata, period. Instead of Magikipi, those of us who are from the Wero, it's Magikipi because we're a little bit more, you know, less hectic with, with, the, with the lingo. The people from Soweto. Yeah, but if you go to Mamilodi, Sochanguve, it's, it's just Majakatata, like that's it. Okay, yeah. Now, majakatata means eating with difficulty. That's what's good. Eating with difficulty. That is what is absolutely archer in these wonderful streets. Good. Eat with difficulty. Majakatata. Hoja is to eat. Tata is hard. And then ka is a. Um, it's like. Uh, 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 what is the. Is it a preposition? With. With. It's like with. With. It means with. All right difficulty so majakatata eat with difficulty so these snacks this black people snack yeah that i grew up enjoying it was delicious but you know suspect things were in it yeah it was called majakatata eat with difficulty um that's what's good out here in these streets it's christmas today hello what's up a day that people celebrate the alleged birth of Jesus Christ. Can't really confirm if it actually is true. But it's also a day when people just sit around with like green trees in their houses that make no sense at all with Christianity. Um, and like a big fat chunky red man on a sleigh with reindeer that apparently gives your children gifts. So they have uh, paganized it, mixed it with all different kinds of other stuff. Um, but like whatever, you know, I'm not out here trying to even complain about all that. There are YouTube channels dedicated to the sole purpose of trying to discourage Christians from partaking in certain activities including the celebration of Christmas or at least the way that like pagans celebrate Christmas with the whole Santa Claus thing and whatnot because it's culture there's another channel for that I'm not that girl all right 
I'm not that researched, learned, studied, neither convicted solidly about anything that is spoken in that regard enough for me to hold fast to it to a point of trying to discourage people to walk away from it. In my channel, I'm just here trying to give people holiness in Christ that they might make the rapture because y'all are about to be left behind because we are going home. Is it clarity? Is something I've been getting told, alerted on a rooftop as with sirens pretty much every single day by the lord and when i don't believe it he then calls me thomas and i'm like okay uh i don't want to be thomas make me believe further but you know it is what it is we just go from day to day mm. i got woken up this morning by the lord uh getting told the word that very word majakatata yes majakatata the lord was like majakatata i was like huh can it did he keep keep he gone what's that about my keep keepy really so here it is that i go to the kitchen so i woke up right this afternoon i woke up like in the afternoon because it's been raining cats and dogs in johannesburg on the 25th of december of december in 2023 you will recall if you're south african living in johannesburg that it was raining cats and dogs um like pretty much all night of the 24th going into the 25th and all day today right it's a monday but uh i have decided to regard this day as a sunday because of the fact that i don't want to exercise it's like the 25th of december because my say i am chilling like that's what's good right so it helps as well that it rained because then it, it helps me get away even further with that excuse um but nonetheless uh with this like trick plan to just like hang ten and relax i always do this work i always got to do this work at least a chat session i got to do that even though i don't exercise and this morning i was woken up by the king of the universe saying to me majakatata like the holy spirit was like majakatata the lord works that way with me you know what i'm saying like he's big off with analogies because he's made me a colorful human being he's made me very innovative and he's given me the gift of the gab and so uh every so often within my gift of the gab whether i'm writing or talking i use very colorful metaphors and the person who feeds me these metaphors is the king of the universe his name is jesus say it with me now yes so amen as kids i was laughing you guys so because i was laughing my nose is kind of runny so yeah i apologize if you find this kind of gross uh bottom line is uh, life is about to get a lot more gross than me blowing my nose in front of you so take it here take it you can have it here take it you can touch it here you're gonna find me quite uh, like uh, pleasant frankly when you're hanging out uh, because that's one scared in the trip match yeah mm. here in last the crank k waking up in the morning and i'm like Ta -da. thank you god you know not morning like i said it was afternoon and so because it was raining as much as it was i lost track of time usually my my alarm in this joint is the heat the exorbitant heat because this place has no ventilation um so when the sun is like all up in my grill popping that's when i'm like get out get out otherwise you're gonna sweat buckets on these sheets um type establishment thing but today it was raining the whole day was cool plus it was dark because of the rain so i get it i just like lingered and lingered and lingered until like literally i woke up at like 11 minutes past 1 p.m i felt like trash but hey what's up i'm here anyway we made it whoop, whoop. anywho anyhow uh, however just as i was waking up uh, you know how that season between being asleep and being awake like you're sort of kind of in a trance like state that's when i get the biggest words of knowledge that's when the lord just pours a lot of stuff because i am awake enough to not forget what i heard or saw but i'm also asleep enough for spiritual activity to be at a, at a lofty height because i get shown quite a lot spiritually in my sleep sp state like when i'm dreaming i get planted in a lot of understanding um and then every so often i i see i, I get visions and then i get words of knowledge etc right type establishment thing and the best time for me to get the most poignant understanding is when i'm in the middle of spirit mode and the dream space is spirit mode i can't say that enough dream space is spirit mode um but people don't don't see that they don't write it down as what it is that they ought regard it as it's important like my mom lena nakobayetsu this morning for different reasons from me she went to a christmas whatever get together with some family members of mine um and she was late because she could not sleep at night i overheard her speaking on the phone with my aunt and the reason why she couldn't sleep was because she got a nightmare i i didn't i didn't get the details of what the nightmare was but it caused her to struggle to sleep until the sun rose and when the sun rose that's the only time she could sleep and so she ended up pretty much 
again just like me she ended up sleeping longer than what was intended and she missed church she didn't go to church with my family she just went to sunday lunch all right that's what's good and i remember wondering in my mind when she was communicating with my aunt about this dream that she had what the dream was and all i could think was god is warning you I don't know what you dreamt that caused you to she said that she had denied me in the sense that she would uh get a bad nightmare go back to sleep and then it would return again she would get another like attack as she's sleeping and i'm like yeah, Tung, you know when when it's like people 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 and you're ignoring it <laughs> like take yes in it you had it coming uh how can i do it? okay so the bible it is written there in in Joel 2 somewhere and also in the Acts of the Apostles 2 yeah somewhere go to so eh that in the last days the Lord is gonna pour out his spirit on all flesh and young men will dream dreams women will prophesy etc you know that passage go check out the exact words verbatim um, out of the scriptures I might be butchering it right now now in that scripture <clears throat> you will notice that the Lord says <clears throat> through the writers of those books that uh, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh it is not written that he will pour that spirit out on only believers on only disciples he said on all flesh on mankind essentially so uh, they are currently human individuals that are getting dreams and visions and prophesying and all that jazz that are not of god people that are not born again yet because the lord is warning the world ubiquitously as to the time that is coming it is written in luke 21 that you must always pray that you might be counted worthy to escape the things which are coming on the earth so the lord pours out his spirit on all flesh of all of this prophecy in order to get them to i guess regarded as worthwhile to go and purchase the pearl of great price and sell everything that they have that they might be counted worthy to escape the things which are coming on the earth so you literally ignore your dreams and your visions especially in these last days at your own peril you ignore them at your own peril i will give you an example scripturally just in case you think i'm speaking twaddle speak or whatever nebuchadnezzar and i'm repeating this again but you know that's just the the way it is that we're with the gospel you got to keep explaining over and over the same stuff again you will recall in the scriptures if, if uh, scriptures if at all you've read the book of daniel that um a, a wicked king a nefarious man by the name of nebuchadnezzar he ultimately repented but uh, in the run-up to he was a bad guy yeah uh, was given a, a very prophetic dream that is still applicable to this day it has been largely fulfilled and there is only one segment of it that is missing to be fulfilled that statue of that big chunky chunky that sort of that dream of that big chunky statue of nebuchadnezzar with the multiple empires ending with the part iron part clay that then get destroyed by the one who's going to establish a, a millennial reign of jesus christ right um that rock is christ and after he crushes all the empires of the earth he's then going to establish a millennial reign for a thousand years and then the kingdom of heaven is going to continue into eternity on the new heaven and on the new earth and that's what that statue was showing it has been fulfilled to the t and all that's left to happen now is for that stone from the sky to fall and land on the feet of the statue and crush all global empires and that's going to happen at the second coming of the lord jesus christ right that very exceptionally prophetic dream was dreamt by a pagan it was dreamt by an unbeliever a godless man do you understand what i'm saying and it was recalled however by daniel because remember how he threatened everybody on some i'm gonna shoot you dead if you don't remember my dream because it makes me all troubled and spurred um yeah uh, so who the person then who was utilized to interpret that dream was a believer because it's always christians who interpret it is always believers who interpret those who are given understanding are the believers however the unbelievers can be given the mere prophecy they can be given the mere dream the mere vision the mere in uh, what is this the mere uh you know black and white pieces of the puzzle but the people who give insight as to what in the world is going on have always been believers it has always been christians so nebuchadnezzar and that statue are one example yet another example of a pagan human individual that had that got a a dream that um he was absolutely accurate and it was so profound in its application that it literally saved or rescued the lineage of jesus from being wiped off the face of the earth and so therefore the redemption that we all have today had it not been for the fulfillment of that particular dream out e prophecy even we would not have a shot at, at redemption because the people of god will have been eliminated would have been eliminated altogether before they became an entire nation um it was a dream of pharaoh uh, in in the days of, of joseph do you understand pharaoh even before pharaoh let's think about the cupbearer and the baker in 
in the prison where, where Joseph was at, they had the dreams, like I said, the pagans or the unbelievers get the dreams. They get the prophecies, but the people who unpack them, who give insights, who are able to interpret are always Christians. The reason why the Lord makes that a thing is in order that we might gain favor, that we might always be relevant in society because people are always trying to just squeeze us out as like through a toothpaste tube. They're always trying to get rid of us. And so in order for us to be essentially, um, what is this, indispensable, the Lord makes sure that we're the only ones that can uh, unravel things that pagans see in a very accurate way that they might not just merely squeeze us out and this is not our earth or whatever because it literally is our earth the meek shall inherit the earth and delight them so, um blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth and uh, blessed is the man of peace um we, we, we will uh, delight ourselves in abundant peace amen all right cool beans and, and banana peels uh, capera baker in the uh, book of genesis in the case of jo of joseph in prison were given dreams and they were interpreted successfully both of them by they were both pagan unbelievers and these dreams were successfully interpreted by a, a jew a hebrew, a hebrew who's this joseph right um and so therefore as a result i believe it was the cupbearer that got away scot-free because he was innocent and the baker was the one that was um executed for stealing from pharaoh right that was the the first thing all up in your grill in that particular story of joseph and then there was pharaoh himself who was troubled by dreams of skinny cows and fat cows and skinny corn or grain and you know healthy grain and whatnot and he was troubled by this unable to get an answer from all of his cupbearers sorry his sorcerers and magicians and then ultimately the person who was able to successfully interpret was joseph now that we've put that out there i bet there are many other cases in the scriptures but i shall use these two in jefila just to help you believe what i'm saying uh you know i am supporting scripture with scripture to help you gauge that that passage of scripture in god's word in joel and and in the acts of the apostles speaking about god pouring out his spirit on all flesh and people dreaming dreams and prophesying that that is a ubiquitous earth thing and not just applicable to christians christians however are the only ones that will be able to interpret these dreams successfully just as joseph was the man for the job and so too was da daniel the man for the job and, and the cases that i spoke about respectively very very well my mother has been getting bombarded like she's got a spiritual gift literally like me uh the what is this god it is written in god's word that the gifts of the holy spirit are without repentance so when people get given spiritual gifts from the pretty much the moment they get out of their mama's wombs uh they they have them it is what it is like it is what it is they just have gifts by a bar now there are people who just have this discernment what what etc but unfortunately the devil goes on right ahead and discombobulates affairs and causes mankind to choose to use the gifts that god has awarded them pretty much from their mother's wombs um for the for their for his purposes so that's how you you know ra ro raising raised up from the ground but you find psychics you find mediums you find necromancers you find people that are out here using gifts of foresight people who can see but they decide to go and become a masangoma instead of prophets do you understand what i'm saying that's what's going on over there it's so just so it's not the it's not the egg it's you are wondering egg before the chicken chicken before the egg um it is egg before the chicken in the sense that it is birth before the actual human being the lord gave you these gifts it is the father on high it is the conceiver it is the one who conceived you in your mother's womb gave you gifts and then over the years they got magnified and the devil upon observing these gifts is the one that then rides that wave and makes out of you isangoma makes out of you a psychic instead of you embracing your gift as a prophet or whatever uh with me i saw like long before i got born again i was getting dreams long before i got saved i, I but it was not that that hectic I was about to use the word bad. Sometimes it feels bad because I get bombarded by these. This this gift is as burdensome to me. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, let's just put that out there. Every so often, that's how I sort of kind of low key wish I didn't have it. But like, it is what it is. It's there. I actually asked for it to be mag, like to be sharpened and squeaked up, like polished as with brasso. But I didn't realize what it would come with so much burden. So now I kind of want to like you know make like Michael Jackson and moonwalk backwards and take back the hands of time and not ask God for that. But anyway, that was his plan. It was what he wanted to do with me, so he did it. Mm. Yeah, I was dreaming. I was dreaming. I was seeing, but I wasn't really sure what in the heaven it is that I was seeing. And I thought just like with my mother, it was just a dream and nightmare. I thought as with my mom, Enele Dorofela, a very frightening, and I, I brushed it off. <clears throat> It was a dream that I was brushing off, very frightening it was, and I woke up with, you know, relief, sort of kind of wiping buckets of sweat from my forehead in the mornings, imagining that it's a dream. They did, however, linger for like two or three days if they were ex exceptionally nightmarish, these dreams, and then they ultimately faded, all right? Uh, from me, the, the writing off of my dreams as who it was just a nightmare 
was not beneficial to me even in the slightest because it was real and there are so many people that are going to go to the abyss they're going to find themselves in hellfire do you understand having gotten some pretty prolific prophetic nightmares that were evidencing what's actually going to happen and then walk in that reality later on perhaps even in eternity only to realize ngiboniwe ngibonile sorry i saw this i saw this giboni like wait a stark naked i saw this 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 fulfillment this truth i saw it in a dream and then they will realize that they were given warnings in advance in in dreams in the night it is written in god's word in the book of job actually um there's somewhere in the book of job that the lord terrifies us with dreams in the night with phantoms in the night that we might repent like that is in the book of job please go google it search it out i don't have energy right now to look it up especially my, considering my computer is slow Mara, there is a scripture you can google it yourself and find it in the book of job that speaks about how it is that the lord terrifies us with phantoms in the night he scares us with dreams so we can repent that is literally what that says that i might be cleansed from my ways you terrify with phantoms so i will walk on the straight and narrow and god is still terrifying us all mankind in totality with phantoms with dreams so that we will basically straighten up and fly right so when you see a dream that is scary do not just wake up in the morning and be like Phew. the earliest of my prophetic dreams that i got when i was a kid was of pretty much hellfire i saw myself being dangled over the flames of hell it's like something was suspending me and i saw one of my cousins who is actually today one of the most prolific witches in the family a guy i saw him literally in a cauldron a cauldron a, 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 a tripod you know that um it's a cauldron in white culture that's what's good he was inside a cauldron uh burning inside it coals burning him inside that cauldron and he was screaming like no man's business it was horrible at the time i could have been like nine and he was only 11. we were both kids largely very innocent having yet to do anything too strange in life and i had that dream at the age of nine of my cousin in his 11 year old body inside a cauldron do you understand what i'm saying burning not being suspended over the flames of hell by something that was making me see this stuff and when i woke up i was so terrified i remembered it vividly that's why i can even be able to describe it today at the age of 39 i was so terrified and it lingered on me i couldn't stop thinking about it at school and everything and it just sat on me for like a week very terribly sort of kind of causing me a little bit of melancholy and then i was able to carry on with life as normal but i never forgot the dream i of course wrote it off as a dream when i woke up in the morning i was like Phew. you know like yeah at the, the, my cousin and i were very tired at the time as kids growing up we were sort of kind of low-key favorite cousins i had two favorite cousins growing up it was him as a boy and the other chick as a female and because he was one of my besties i was so crushed by that plus god gave me the feelings of 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 foreboding and the sorrow of seeing a soul in hell like that he gave them to me and they lingered in in the sense that the the requisite emotion the appropriate emotion that we all feel for lost souls that lingered evidencing god's burden for the lost god's burden for the future of my cousin and where it's taking him it is written in god's word that the lord does not delight in the death of him who dieth and in my dream i was made to feel that feeling of foreboding sorrow sadness and the travesty of a man a human being ending up in the flames of hell it is written up in god and written in god's word that um that hellfire right um has been made for the devil and his angels and we as human beings are not supposed to go there and so when they when every single human being that goes to hell it is a travesty on the on, on the part of the lord do you understand not on the part of the lord but on the part of the, the 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 image of god inside human beings it is a travesty for people to end up there because they unlike the fallen angels have been given a second chance they've been given propitiation by the blood of the lamb they have an a, opportunity to get out from the darkness that they were born to inherit uh to inevitably just kind of walk in and so it is a travesty when people go to hell and i was made to feel that travesty i was made to feel the feelings of foreboding and all that sorrow that that devastation that despair um the the, the pain in my heart over the wealth of sorrow and torment that my cousin was in that lingered and it sat on me for beke gaufela kisa kono ho focus a handle kere as a child to understand in school and everything i could not concentrate properly and then afterwards it kind of you know i became better I, I, I pretty much got over it i got over it and i was relieved by the fact that it wasn't true at the time nikki and i catholic schools i was in catholic schools and yet i was not taught about hell 
and you know people who don't teach children about hellfire because they think they're sparing them sparing them from what you you do best to let them know that hell is like a total thing i went to catholic school very orthodox catholic schools where it is that we went to masses on like during the week and stuff and we were always just like praying in a chapel and every side time there was like some water by some dunking thing that we always used to like yeah like nuns walking around us and everything praying the our father i don't know how many times in the hail mary like before we start class like it was just like such a religious school too religious school that, that i went to and when i had this dream i was in a religious school and yet it, i didn't understand what i saw how in the world did I not understand what I saw? If at all I was attending a religious school, I should have known that that was hellfire. But I didn't know why, because not even a single teacher then taught me. No one ever gave me the doctrine of hell as a kid. So I was confused when I saw that dream. I was confused. Oh, and that same cousin was also in a Catholic school, but a different one. Um, he, he was one in one in Kosovo, I took St. Matthews, and I was in Mayfair Convent by then. I'd already moved to Mayfair Convent because I had gone to St. Matthews first. I told you I'd been to two Catholic schools where it was very, very hectic. The first was St. Matthews, and then in Soweto, and then it was, um, what is this, a Mayfair Convent. And then afterwards, I moved to a secular school that wasn't really too focused on too much religion, but it was still Christian, so we prayed and did hymns in the morning and what have you. <clears throat> Go Winchester Ridge Primary, but all that stuff happened to me as a kid who was attending schools, a school where the Bible was read from quite a lot, and yet that those doctrines that the parts of, of of the word of god where hell is described were just hopped over they were glided by they were ignored they were not trained us and the lord was the one that went and told the kid that this stuff is real and a future is coming prophecy yet again i was only nine my cousin was 11 but the lord knew what was what would come he knows the end from the beginning from the end he's the alpha and the omega and he it is written in god's word in psalm 139 that the lord knows all of the days of our lives before any of them should come to pass and he speaks of jeremiah having been called from his mother's womb to be a prophet to the nations do you understand what i'm saying so the lord knows what you're gonna do all the way up until you pass away or get raptured etc and so the lord knew that i would at some point give my life to him and that's why i was dangled over hellfire whereas my cousin was in a cauldron he was in a cauldron and at the time both of us were in these like catholic schools do you understand what i'm saying both of us were in these catholic schools and guys it, it would take me getting born again literally um like uh, just under like 10 years later just under 10 years later when i was 26 and a half i, I get born again do you understand no not 10 20 years because i was nine right so um there's like 19 and 29 yeah i was oh, just under tw just under 20 years later i then get born again under 10 20 years later i get just under 20 years later i get born again and only once i get saved i then get trained i get basically taught about all this I understand in the run-up to my redemption i had been to churches infrequently i mean i wasn't my mom wasn't a religious nut and so for those reasons she never took us to church every sunday every so often there would be patches in a year where we'd go to church for like four sundays in a row and then it would be over like and then we would go back to being pretty secular again uh type establishment thing uh, but i was never kept in church perpetually do you understand what i'm saying but even in those few times when i was in church um as a as a kid growing up and not once did i ever go to church on a day where the pastor was teaching about hell and the fear of god was never ever driven into me nothing like literally the fear of god of hell never was regarded as a necessity to teach like i live in a christian country where it is that the gospel is freely preached Nobody gets given grief for anything. No sermon is ever too taboo in South Africa, guys. This is not the Middle East for crying out loud. And yet, as a child growing up in a Christian nation, I never heard even one Hellfire and Brimstone teacher until I found them on the internet in America. I mean, just absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. So when, when, when I was 26, 26 going on 27, that's when it clicked on me. I had an aha moment about that dream that i had when i was nine years old that yo god was showing me hellfire and he was showing me the future of my cousin and he was showing me my protected or concealed or consecrated state even from the time when i was a, a child before i had given my life to him he had forced i guess he had pretty much for ordained for me to ultimately walk in that and when it, it dawned on me i started to think about i started to I started to think about that same cousin of mine, right? And lo and behold, he was already very severely involved in, in occult magic, in darkness. So much so that his sister was raising it. His sister was like, yeah, I'm very concerned about my brother. He's involved in some pretty dark stuff. And I don't know where it's on, and he's self-practicing. That was before everybody got dunked like a donut inside some chocolate into the occult. That was before even that same cousin ended up uh, partaking in, in very dark magic. My family, about... 
10 to 12 years ago entered into a very dark dark place a lot of them the youth my my pretty much the millennials uh, generation x exennials yeah this my my generation my yeah peers that's when they started to dabble with the darkness but before then it was kind of sunlight and roses you know and that cousin was in sunlight and roses mode she was irreligious in the sense that she had grown up in a catholic church but she was secular very very extremely secular but she was not a dabbler she was not a dabbler she was not a witch at all to a point where upon discovering the dabbling nature of her brother she raised it and came to speak to me about it because at the time i had you know embraced the lord i was embracing god and they were willing to talk about god with me plus she was also telling my mom also i'm very worried about my brother because he's involved in something very dark and then she went into it herself afterwards so they all just entered into a very dark highway to hell. Uh, that's what's going on, right? Uh, but well, however, when my cousin came and told me about the road to hell that my other cousin, the brother, was in, all right? I remember that dream and it dawned on me that, oh my goodness, like I did see a cauldron. Giboni pizza adna chamo harayon. Giboni involvement in the occult from there when I was very, very young. He was among the first to dabble with this stuff and he is among the most prolific of uh, devil worshippers in the family. Among the most prolific. The bosom buddy best day, the one that I was very tight with. Um, That's what's good. The two of them are the worst uh, Satanists in the family. Like the worst. Like yeah, really, 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 very, very ex like, excruciatingly uh, terrible. Terrible. and the only reason why this cousin one the male I don't talk to, about him that much is because his focus on me is not as uniquely like he's not doubling down on me he doesn't he doesn't double down on me he doesn't double down on me he's just messing with the whole family and with outsiders but he does not have a bone to pick with me if you know what I mean he doesn't have a bone to pick with me he, he's not beefing with me however this cousin of mine appears to be the most prolific devil worshiper in the family because she's actively beefing with me and so because she's beefing with me she is investing in a lot of sorcery against me but she is not the most prolific devil worshiper in the family she's not my other cousin is but the other cousin is not that deeply focused on me if anything she he has been shown that there's something about me and when he discovered that there's something about me as i'm a foster as i'm a hersha he just moved on to the next one he just yeah that's what's going on that's why i barely speak about the guy it's only because he's not too you know all up in my grill i i speak only about those people that are always all up in my grill because they have a and they torment me with spirits type establishment thing yeah now that you you have that understanding uh thus okay you must gauge thought or nightmare whatever it is that my mother nightmarishly got all right um it made me wonder it concerned me because I was something else this morning. I was going to be this morning. I got shown a dream this morning. This afternoon, whatever time I woke up, man, like, I think I struggled. Anyway, yeah, type establishment thing. When my mother spoke, talk, 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 told my auntie that, um, that Ubi Lele, like, old Tobayezi, she was struggling. Ngoglala, Ngoba, Mega Pupa. She was struggling, Horubala. Because now she was struggling to sleep because she was dreaming. Uh, type of establishment thing. Yeah, when that happened, I wondered, oh, Lori Lane, what did, what did you dream? I was like wondering, what under heaven did you dream? But I was also wagging my head while brushing my teeth. Like, guy on a 1 p.m. But I always feel so bad. after midday. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, I'm out here brushing my teeth, wondering, oh, Lori Lane, just in the same way that Nike Fidel Toro 1990 whatever first stop hey hey oh lord what did you dream like you're walking past these hazards like yeah anyway mm, the reason why I wondered what my mother dreamt was because when I was newly saved before Gushuba hard knock like right now what's going on in my life before things got out of hand I got persecuted with things flying all over the show things hitting the fan and muddying the walls before I was entered into this depth of exec of basically executing persecution uh what is this my mother rocked up to me remember things were still in the day um shubi all that hectically yet uh, type establishment thing um and my mother came to me one morning I believe it could have actually been a Saturday because I don't recall me go be getting busy for work, getting ready for work or whatever. So maybe Nelly Saturday gets um towards 
like yeah when i was newly saved i moved back home from my from the apartment i was renting because i wanted to finish paying my debts literally i was inspired by scripture where it is written oh no man nothing except love so i moved back home to pay off my debts and so i could also take out yet another debt basically a home loan uh, so i moved home to finish type establishment thing and so i was living with my mom uh, at like 26 27 right and um and she she came to me one day and she was like hey, but I had a dream you know and then like, I didn't understand why I was like that in my dream I like, I understand and they it's a sense of matter the the world was coming to an end and the only place where it was safe was where mo, mo, mo no we no longo ding. was okay she said that she dreamt that the world was coming to an end it was chaotic everywhere and the only place where it was safe was where I was at at the time I was a new convert I had not yet studied too much on eschatology so I had not yet solid conviction about it being the end of the world now you will know if you are a Christian um, how it is that after you get born again one of the first things that you happen upon one of the first epi ep epiphanies you walk into is the realization that the world is ending like Bible so much Bible prophecy has been fulfilled uh, describing the world as we know it in the run-up to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that this epiphany is usually the first thing that hits you with a flood when you get born again you notice that the world is ending but first you get evangelized and you're all happy and you're bouncy on your feet you're excited about the gospel and in that mode and in that euphoria um you, you then start studying the bible and that's only when you find out that oh it's the end of the world right now right so i was still in the euphoria mode i was yet to study eschatology i did not believe it was the end of the world i, I thoroughly thought we still had another like 27 000 years left okay and when my mother was like Logale, it was the end of the world i imagined it a metaphor and i also since i was praying for my family to get redeemed i imagined that that was god answering my prayer by making her see a disaster where it is that the only place that i'm safe is at so my response was like yeah of course you know um that's the lord pretty much bringing you reeling you in you know come at like uh telling you to go to come back home you know people when they're lost however professing christ when you tell them they're lost they get very upset anyway whatever my mom was like in the dream it was the end of the world everything was basically ending and the only place where it was safe was where it is that i was at and she said that she was upset with that that's why she was like i didn't understand why in the dream why was i like that in my dream um it was ending everything was ending the only place where it was safe was where you were at but i was upset with that that i didn't want to run with it because i did not want you to be right but i don't understand why because at the time my mother was what is this we were cool we were cool she was not at loggerheads with me she was not actively trying to block me she wasn't actively trying to destroy my future do you understand oh she has been flipped on me and indeed this morning when i was brushing my teeth the lord said to me by the holy spirit she is barely recognizable she's barely recognizable in other words the former person that she used to be because she's fallen very far away from god involved in darkness just as the whole family is and bonke they are barely recognizable and mind you in the run-up to everything of mine falling apart i once got a a very audible word of knowledge so the night before i was reading uh is it exodus or no nah, it's not exodus or, or first and second kings you know those books where god's people are taking lands they're taking uh they, they're going to war like joshua and K and caleb it's not exodus it's the next one after that chronicles kings kings it's kings ne? first or second i don't chronicles no nah, it's chronicles it's chronicles it's chronicles I was I was going through this the, the Bible chronologically. That's what I'm explaining to you guys. I, I read from like Genesis and I was trying to like cover the whole Bible. I did not succeed to just put that out there. All right, but at the time I was reading about all of the conquerings, the feats of God's children in taking the the, the land. Do you understand? In winning battles and winning wars, I was there, and and having 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 gone to having gone sorry to the Bible. Um, do you understand? Having gone through the Bible in the night before, before Kerubala, I, I when I slept that night, the morning before I woke up, remember I told you guys that the season between me waking up and me being waking up, 
me waking me being asleep and waking up that in that transitory phase that state where you're sort of kind of in a trance you know you're still kind of woozy type thing not woozy but dizzy yeah in that state that's when i get my loudest and most potent words of knowledge do you understand what i'm saying and i heard very audibly in a way that i recalled and the reason why the lord dumps a lot of knowledge in that season is because like i said unlike dreams sometimes the devil steals dreams from me and i struggle to remember i struggle to remember some dreams god himself makes me forget uh but other dreams i can tell that i gotta know what was said but then you know it, it's all fuzzy it's all fuzzy it's all fuzzy yeah and however so if i get uh given understanding in that waking up mode i don't forget that because i'm practically awake i'm practically awake and during that mode i heard because i was reading those scriptures about all of those conquerings of by god's people of lands that they would take i heard audibly the jebusites the amorites the kushites the moabites the etc etc are coming against your family so basically all those ites that were always against god's people in the bible god said them to me one after the other this after the other after the other with the level of imagery of war that i was reading about in the bible that i was imagining pretty much playing in my mind in that waking up mode and the lord was like the amorites the jebusites the uh, the kushites the, the um amalekites the this the that they're coming against your family and i then woke up officially out of that and i remembered it i had no idea under heaven that that would mean that my whole family would be essentially taken by a tsunami of darkness to a point of persecuting me so violently that i would barely recognize any of them uh, i don't recognize that cousin of mine that was telling me about her brother i don't recognize anybody my mom my sisters i don't recognize anybody tsunami. They, literally the amalekites essentially god was telling me an attack is coming on your family and it's going to come at you it's going to come at you yeah well i mean it would take a, a good like two three years before that amorite jebusite thing would affect um it took a minute because god, god trained me up for something like three years before i got thrown into persecution uh and in that time that i was building up my spirit i was being persecuted like ever so mildly the way that any christian in a country that preaches the gospel that doesn't persecute christians gets persecuted you just get persecuted by people teasing you ah, so can I get a guess no? you just get persecuted by people now no longer inviting you to things because they think you're that religious uptight rando but you don't get the kind of persecution where it is that they will literally pull the rack from under your feet gaslight you lie about you um leave you abandoned desert like decimated destitute essentially like a hobo i mean that level of persecution that's the kind of stuff you find in iran that's the kind of stuff that when a muslim convert to christianity converts they get ex what is this um uh dis disowned by an entire family yeah like made into second class citizens that stuff that happens in india that stuff that happens in iran stuff that happens pretty much like i said in the middle east china maybe where your whole family will just be like whoa uh, i'm sorry yeah but not in south africa when we get saved up in this joint maybe you might get the odd aunt on some every we like just basically offend you for your faith but not like i said pull the rug from under your feet and treat you like you you are the scum of the earth it's a first it's an it's a what is happening to me is unprecedented for my country and also for my family that's what you must understand so when stuff like this starts to happen that's what god means when he says look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh what is the stuff that happens before your redemption draws nigh it is the, uh, the the observation of men betraying one another men hating one another people throwing you over to the authorities to be killed because of an increase in lawlessness the love of many growing cold and so therefore when you see these things happening look up and lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh and i started to notice these things happening of course nine going on 10 years ago and 10 years well nine to 10 years later i, I rounded off to the nearest 10 because it's actually nine years this year okay it's going to be 10 years next year that i've been in this position um all this decade later it's gotten worse it's not gotten better i've prayed about it i have tried to come out i've tried to find respite you know something to get me out of this thing and nothing is working my countrymen are dark this land is dark it is dark in a way i don't recognize to a point where having gone from being a patriot for my country i love south africa like no man's business i can't even stand hearing a south african accent in movies i can't stand hearing south african people talking like i have such a bad ptsd with my countrymen because of the way that i've been mistreated by them i've been so badly treated by south africa that i literally have got qualms with it 
in a way that historically was not the case. I never imagined that I would ever leave this country. I always knew that I would travel overseas, but I would always come back to South Africa to a point where I, I wasn't even like I, I, upon becoming a professional, I always used to on career junction and tick not getting a tick and willing to relocate. You know that that part where it says that uh, are you willing to relocate? Yeah, I was always been. I would always say I'm unwilling to relocate. I didn't want to live any more. I didn't want to leave this country. I didn't want to live anywhere other than in South Africa. I was gonna stay here for life. Nothing beats South Africa, or at least at the time, that's how I thought. I never wanted to live anywhere else. All these people um, glamorizing the U.S. for me it was like not like whatever. I I just I had such an adoration for my country that I like whatever. I didn't care. I loved my country. I like especially Johannesburg, like because that's where I'm from. Do you understand? So nobody could have ever ever pulled me out of South Africa, but for with kicking and screaming. And right now I am being pulled out of South Africa with kicking and screaming because I have to go. Like I, I, I the fact that I have been reduced to an asylum seeker is ridiculous. Like I want to get out of this country. It it has be been made at enmity with me. My president is a fool. Do you understand what I'm saying? He he stands with all of God's enemies, and I don't even understand how in the world under heaven that that's still a thing. He's out here having uh, caucuses, meetings with pro-Palestinian protesters in the country, talking about how it is that Israel is committing genocide. Like he makes me cringe. I belong to the wrong country. I have been making war right now with America because of the way that they've shadow banned me, the exploitation of African talent and all that jazz. I've got issues, qualms with America, but America ain't got jacked to the, uh, in, on South Africa in terms of how departed from God it is. Because even with their lackluster, flaccid, fluffy president that is Joe Biden, they are still largely as a nation standing with Israel. And so for me, it made me realize that, okay, fine, so America is messed up and there's so much rubbish going on over there, but this war in Israel has set the record straight in my mind as to the destruction of America versus the destruction of South Africa. And all I could think about was that before the Lord will destroy the US, he will destroy South Africa first because of the stand by South Africa for, against, sorry, Israel. So me feeling so out of place where I'm at, alongside the persecution by my country, how it is that it spat me out, and the way that it keeps continuing to treat me to this day, this country of mine that I am uh, from, I am realizing, waking up to discover that when things get this extreme, where it is that formerly very patriotic people living in otherwise very democratic countries where human rights are a thing, when people in such nations are starting to experience itchiness in their bones, wanting to leave, seeking asylum in other countries, when, when you are trying to seek asylum from a free country with a democratically elected president there is nowhere to go on that day there's no better country to live but south, uh, uh, but for south africa i can't say that enough there is no better country to live but the u.s there's no better country to live than parts of europe and if those places that are so democratic and free when people in there want to leave where are we gonna go because people seek asylum out of countries like lebanon People seek asylum out of countries like Iran, guys. People seek asylum out of countries where there is a sovereign, a dictator, a despot that is giving people a very hard time. That's where people seek asylum out of. People seek asylum out of nations that because of the sovereign, there is no, you know, what, what do you call this thing? Democra democracy, democracy. There's no democracy, there's no human rights. People are stymied and stifled and they want legroom. They want to breathe, they want to take up their bras and let their breasts hang. And in the countries where they live, they are stymied. And there is no better country to flee to but for democratic nations when you are that girl or that guy. And so when democratic nations are causing their citizens to want to flee their nations, it's over for the world. I, I can't tell you this enough. There was some strange little lesbian that I met on Facebook that developed a crush on me. That was from, ish, let me just say this.